as I said, now we're going to do some more on 2D panel methods. So this is based on Captain Plotkin. and note by Mark Drella. So how do we actually obtain a panel solution for a foil over an airfoil? So let's start again. We've got our picture of our airfoil. Let's make a copy of that. The infinity is here at some angle of attack so that we have an x component u infinity and a y component v infinity. Stagnation point is perhaps somewhere here and streamlines look like that. What we need is this gamma of s source strength or vortex strength distribution on the surface. So we discretize and again we end up with this discrete panels. And let's say that here for panel J okay, let's fill in this in a bit more detail. Finish going around the airfoil. Then, if we start at the trailing edge with s equals zero, and if s is increasing going around the airfoil clockwise, then we have node one, two, etc., up to n minus one and n. So there's actually two overlapping nodes at the trailing edge, and here. S is X max. So on, say here, panel J, that will have points J and J plus 1. On either side, which has unknown gamma j. Now just to give an idea of what the vortex panel strengths will look like around this airfoil, if I sketch this very roughly, there's S, there's uh, vorticity, and we'll start negative come up where this crosses zero is the stagnation point here. And this is where positive is uh, clockwise. So now we can sort of zoom in and look at an individual panel. On each panel, we have a piecewise linear vortex sheet strength, is actually how this is typically into, uh, implemented. So, gamma of S is gamma J, S of J plus 1 minus S, over S of J plus 1 minus S J, plus gamma J plus 1, S minus S J, over S J plus 1 minus S J. So that we end up with something like this. 
S gamma. Uh, so if we have three points here, say S J minus one, S J J plus one. We may have gamma J minus one. J and J plus one. And so now we have to think about the fact that these are point vortices, and from our potential flow review, we remember that these induce a velocity field. There's a there's a singularity, um, but it drives the entire velocity field, right? So if we have a field point, so this is to start at least, an arbitrary point anywhere in our full field, the potential at the field point i is going to be u infinity xi plus u infinity yi, and this is just the velocity potential of the uniform flow, and then because we can use linear superposition, We'll just sum over all of the panels some factor Kij times the local short source strength. And then the Kij gives the induced velocity at i from the singularity on panel J as follows. And we have a sum over two terms because of the linearly varying source strength. Theta ds, this is theta, well theta is a function of s, xi, and yi, and this is just tan inverse yi minus y of s over xi minus x of s. Then from the definition of the velocity potential, we can directly get the components of velocity, which are ui, the i, i, the xi, which is going to be u infinity plus the sum over j equals 1 to n of dk i j dxi, partial derivative of that kij factor. And vi is similarly the infinity plus the sum of dkij dyi dmj. Now expressions for these dkij dxi and dkij dyi are in Katz and Plotkin. Um, you can see these are going to be a little bit complicated mathematically, uh, and I'm not going to write them out here, but what you can see is that they depend only on the airfoil geometry and not, not in any way on the aerodynamics. And you can see this because of the definition of K, which involves coordinates only, S, X, and Y. So it's spatial derivatives must also only involve uh, S, X, and Y. So to help illustrate what exactly we've, we've done here, here's a curved region on the airfoil surface. Here's a panel connecting two points on it. Uh, so let's say this one's S, J. This is S, J plus 1. We've got gamma J here. 
and gamma j plus 1 here, and there's some ds segment on here. And here's field point i, so this is xi, yi, will be some r radius going from the mid uh, ds point on the panel out to that point, and this will be at some angle theta. Now again we apply the far field boundary at infinity that the velocity is just the infinity. Now there are multiple ways of solving this problem or of applying the boundary conditions on the surface of the airfoil and we'll look at two of them here. So one is what we call a Dirac Dirichlet boundary condition method. So this is uh, based on the potential, um, and this is how we set the flow tangency on the airfoil. So basically, we pick n field points. Xi, yi. And we pick them just inside the panel nodes. So that might look like just there. Then we set the potential there to be some unknown interior potential. We apply the kata condition, which is that gamma 1 plus gamma n equals 0. Then we solve the n plus 1 by n plus 1 linear system. For our unknowns, which are gamma j and this interior potential, theta naught, or sorry, uh, phi naught. Okay, so what does this look like mathematically? Looks like big matrix. Here's your ij terms. Uh, there's an extra row and column because of this interior potential. Uh, then this is multiplied with a vector which has the gamma j's and the unknown potential. And this is equal to the free stream potential at, uh, on each point and interior potential uh, product is zero. So let's go into a little bit more detail on exactly what's going on here. Again, I'm not interested in going th through this in so much detail that you would necessarily be able to develop uh, a panel code or that you would be able to solve uh, a handwritten problem where you had to sort of emulate a panel code, um, at least not without some significant additional given information. But what I want you to be able to do is appreciate what's going on under the hood when you're using a panel method code like XFOIL. So let's say we've got a couple of control points. We've got our potential, which is Because essentially these control points are um, on the surface uh, and it's the other point was sort of right inside. Well, we can say the potential is the same. So this is a constant 
So what do we? Why does this work? What are we doing? Well, we're, we're, what we're doing by saying the potential is constant all along the surface of the airfoil, um, it's an indirect way of setting grad phi, which is the velocity, equals zero inside the airfoil. So by setting this constant potential inside, that's completely enclosed. Uh, we ensure that there's there's zero velocity inside the airfoil, and because there's zero velocity inside, um, this ensures flow tangency from conservation of mass. Right? If there's no flow inside, no velocity inside, then nothing can be flowing in and out uh, of the airfoil surface, and therefore the flow tangency boundary condition must be satisfied. Now this potential is the free stream potential plus sum of AIJ gamma J. Uh, here now, no, well, why has something changed? Well, we're using A, not K here, because the potentials are being taken at the control points rather than at uh, the panel points. So it's gamma i instead of gamma j. So this coefficient changes. So we call this an aerodynamic influence coefficient matrix. As you can see, there's, uh, two, there's a row index and a column index. So it's an aerodynamic influence coefficient matrix. So we can write, actually, that the free stream potential plus this matrix product is equal to the unknown potential on the interior of the airfoil at each of the control points i from 1 to n. But now we have n plus 1 unknowns because we've added this phi naught to the original uh, n control points. Um, so we now need to use the Cutta condition to close the system, basically to give us an extra equation. So we have our AIJ. So I'm sort of filling in this sketch of the matrix that I had before. This will all be all ones. This will be zero. And we've got our gamma j, phi naught equals negative phi, negative phi infinity, which is zero. So this is then used to give the gamma j. So to review, with this Dirichlet boundary condition approach, um, we set the control points just inside uh, the panel uh, midpoints so that we can define a potential there, which is the potential inside of our airfoil. We set that potential to be a constant, which then requires, because it's the same constant over all points on the airfoil, that there's actually no flow inside the airfoil. The velocity is zero. And that, in turn, ensures that we satisfy the flow tangency boundary condition on the airfoil surface. In defining this interior potential, which initially is unknown, we've added an extra equation to the system. But that's okay because we have an extra condition, which is the Cutta condition. And applying it, we then solve an augmented system of equations for the unknown panel strengths of which there are n plus one additional equation for the value of the potential inside the airfoil, which we don't ultimately care about but is necessary to solve for the complete system.